Hello and welcome to secure your spring based application. As a part of section 2, we are going to take a look at web security java configuration. How do you intercept HTTP request and make it secure? How do you provide the access control in spring security? How do you make the amendments in java configuration and the form logins? And how do you authorize the requests coming in? In the first video of this section, we are going to take a look at session fixation, spring security java configuration and the implicit login page spring security provides and how do you configure in memory user detail service. So what is a session fixation? Session fixation is an attack that permits the hacker to hijack a valid user session. So the attackers explores a limitation in the way the web application manages the session ID. So for an example, let's take our insecure web application the first application that we created a spring simplest spring web application MVC. We are going to take a look at that. So the scenario is hacker signs off with this application logs in into this application and fetch the session ID. He can take the session ID by his own tools that he has or using proxies or anything because the session IDs gets stored in the cookies. So they have several tools to do that. Now the hacker sends this link with the embedding session ID with that link and send it to the unaware user. Even by embedding this link to an image or using any offer links or advertisements, etc. Now the unaware user doesn't know that this link is sent by an hacker and he clicks on some advertisements or some images. Once he clicks on it, he's been taken into the authentication page and he authenticates himself with the application. Now once he authenticates himself, he is going to log in in the same session that hackers has the session ID with. So now once he logs in, it gives the hacker the unlimited privilege of the unaware user account. So for an example, let's go to Eclipse and see our Spring MVC application that we created. So this is my Eclipse. I have already started this Spring MVC application. So just open up. So let's say test is in hacker user test. He is logging in the application. Now this is the session ID which I am printing here. Use the hacker can take it by a proxy or any of the tools. Now what he says, what he does is for an example, this is a public system, a internet cafe or somewhere. Now he logs in and then reset the page to login page again. Now the unaware user comes in because as of now the hacker hasn't logged out. Now the unaware user comes in and see it's an authentication page. He just went into giving his credentials and logs in. Once he logs in, if you see the session ID that gets created for the hacker, the unaware user is logging in with the same session ID. So if you compare these two session IDs, these are exactly the same. So by doing that, the unaware user has given all the rights of his account to the hacker. Now hacker can access his account till the extent of session invalidation timeout. And if there isn't any timeout, he has unlimited privileges for how long? Not sure. Okay. So to do that, Spring Security provides a way to remove this session fixation and those things. So let's directly look at Java configuration of Spring Security. Let's not dwell more time on it. So I'm going to create a simplest Spring Security application. You can find it on the GitHub. As soon as you clone the Spring Security repository, the one we did in section one, you will have this simple Spring Security as a project too. Now let's get into it. Go to the Java resources, go to the config package and let's start with the web app initializer. So this is the same app initializer that we used in our simplest spring MVC application. It doesn't have anything extra. This is the class that we used. This extends abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet and you are configuring web configuration. That means your view resolvers and everything. This is where you are mapping the dispatcher servlet. 
Now I am not using any Postgre servers or uh, SQL server or anything. I am not maintaining a database in this application for now. So I am not using root configuration for now. Now if I see the web configuration, this is just the same thing. I am configuring the V resolvers and the context listener. Now our main thing comes in, the additional thing comes in, the security config. This is a configuration and you have enabled the web security. This is important because by enabling this web security, it gives you the principle. You can take the principle using authentication principle. We will look at that later on. All right. And this security config is going to extend web security configurer adapter. All right. Now we can use two methods. One method is a configure method, which takes the authentication manager builder of web security configurer adapter and you can provide the in-memory authentication users over here. Apart from it, if you don't want to configure this method, you can use in user detail service. So you can create a bean of user detail service. In the first section of our tutorial, we came to know that user detail service is a bridge. It gives you the user detail object and the user detail object is actually a bridge between the principle that your authentication request holds and the user detail in your database or wherever you are maintaining the credentials. So you can create a bean of user detail service. You can use in memory user details manager. This is a class which in the hierarchy implements user detail service. Okay. So this class also has load users by username, the same method, the single method this user detail service has. So if you click on F3, you will be going to the interface user, user detail service and the only method load user by username. So if you click on in memory user detail manager, you will have that method and have the definition of that method too. load user by username. All right. So let's get back to it. How do you give the in memory detail? So you create an object of it and by using create user method, you provide the username, password and the role the user can have. So you are creating a bean here or instead of this, if you don't want this, you can use the configure method, override that method. The configure method is given to you by web security configurer adapter. You can override this method and provide the authentication manager builder and with that object, you can use in memory authentication and provides the credential username and password. Now that's okay. You have given the security config. Now, how do you register this security config? So we, in the first section, we also came to know that is spring security filter chain to intercept a request. And then it takes the spring context holder. Then it context holder holds the spring context and a spring context holds the authentication object. And then authentication object in turn holds the principal object from the initial where exactly that spring security filter chain is created. So if you look at this web security, if you click on F3, so if you look at this abstract class, you would be able to see you search for it configure web configure web security web this method basically creates a spring security filter chains for you of course you don't need to 90 percent of the time unless this is very complicated and you just want to change your security filter chain work in your way then you do that otherwise you don't need to override it at all now how do you register this spring security filter chain you have created this security config class but how do you register this class to register it you need to create another class which extend abstract security web application initializer. All right. Once you extend this, you have a method where you can specify the which class is going to create a spring security filter chain for you. So you have security config class where you have defined all the in memory authentication. So this class is going to be registered in a class which extends abstract security web application initializer. All right, that's it. Nothing else. Now let us look at the controller. This is my controller, only one controller that I'm getting. 
I've mapped the request of forward slash that mean the displayer servlet forward slash request and this is a get method as soon as this request comes in it will create a model in view and redirect it to you to home.jsp so let's look at our home.jsp source web app web inf and home.jsp so this home.jsp basically looking at the page context and checking the user principle and the name of user principle if let's say from the starting user is not authenticated then the user principle will not be set and the name of course will not be set so the name will be null so in case this is how you check a variable passed from the controller or from anywhere you can check using the tag library of the stl you can use if else block and then test and the variable name is it null or not if it's null it doesn't do anything okay once your user principle is null then spring security intercept your request and pass it to the implicit login page to get authenticated so this jsp works only when the user principle is set if the user principle is not set spring security takes that intercept that request and pass it to the implicit login page it has all right now once user gets authenticated with the implicit login page of spring security this user principle will be set and this is where it's going to print the name of the user principle and then there's a logout reference now i am printing the session id2 so we are going to take a look at how spring security avoids session fixation in my home controller this is where i am logging out the logout request goes to this method and in this method actually spring security supports http servlet request logout method so by taking the http servlet request object and calling the method logout it basically clears the context the security context of your application so once security context is cleared there is no authentication object and so there is no principle once there is no principle spring security will take the request and again redirect it to the implicit login page in this application now if i am going to do the request dot logout because it clears the context of my application that means security context we can do that with the security context holder get context the other way of doing that security context holder get context this gives you the security context and you are setting the authentication object to null another way of doing that is take the security context holder and then call the method clear context so all these three ways are similar but let me remind you that this is not the way we handle the logout of the spring security application we will take a look at how do you gracefully log out from spring security this is not the way we are going to do that but for now that's how we are doing it in the simplest spring security application all right let's start this application so i'm going to deploy this application the application is deployed see we haven't created any login page have we created a, a jsp page which takes the username and password in this simplest spring security application no so this is the implicit login page provided by the spring security now i'm going to pass the hacker parameter so test is the uh, user and password that we provided in security config for the user test is the test logging in so this is how we logged in and the session id is this let me copy this session id to validate this is my session id this was my previous session id is from unsecured application i'm going to remove it now go back to chrome now this hacker once again reset this page to the login page without logging out so if if i am an unaware user and if this would have been 
the unsecured application and once I logs in the same session, I log in the same session. But this is secured by Spring Security. So if I log in this time, there would be another session created for me. So let's log in. Now the session ID is changed. So let's find out the difference between the previous one and the new one. See, this is totally changed. The session IDs are totally changed because Spring Security takes session fixation into consideration and by the start, by enabling web security, by doing this much only, it passes the hidden parameter that take care of your session fixation. Alright, so hacker won't be able to do session fixation thing on your application which is secured by Spring Security.